Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter 3 of the fundamentals of computing. So for this chapter we will be discussing the following the basic computer concept its functionalities and we will also be discussing the advantages and disadvantages the different computer types computer applications computer generations and different computer components so um, you may have observed and noticed that uh, this seems to be already discussed in the chapter one um, in the chapter one those were just a glimpse of the basic computer components which we will be thoroughly discussing in this chapter okay so we're going to start with the functionalities of the computer okay so again as what i have told you and um, the step one of the computer would be it takes data as the input okay so you give the instructions to a computer and after that, it will stores the data or instructions in its memory and, and use them as required. Okay, so after storing the data, it will gonna process the data and converts it into a useful information. Then it will generate an output. So going back to the user. And of course, the last functionality would be it will control all the different uh, step one from step four. So that is the very basic you know, functionalities or process of a computer. Okay, now let's move on to the di different advantages of a computer. Okay, so why computers is important? Okay, what are the different advantages? So first is the high speed. Okay, so computer is a very fast device. It is capable of performing calculation of a very large amount of data. And a computer has a unit of speed in microsecond, nanosecond, or even in picosecond. So it can also perform millions of calculations in a few seconds as compared to a man who will spend many months to perform the same task. So again, high speed no it's a very fast device next is accuracy so computers uh, are very accurate okay so the calculations are 100 percent error free so computer perform all jobs with 100 percent accuracy provided that the input is correct so when your instructions to a computer is correct then it will going to give you a correct output but if your instructions is you know vague or not correct not valid then it will going to give you a, a invalid result so that's that is what accuracy is all about next is the storage capability so uh, memory is very important characteristic of computers a computer has much more storage capacity than a human beings so it can store large amount of data and of course it can store any type of data such as images, videos, text, audio. Okay, so that is the storage capability of a computer. Next, diligence. Okay, so unlike human beings, a computer is free from monotony, tiredness, and lack of concentration. So it can work continuously without any error or boredom. Okay. It can perform repeated tasks with the same speed and accuracy. So it's very different from a human being. And we all know that. Okay. And versatility. No, so the computer is a very versatile machine. A computer is very flexible in performing the jobs to be done. So this machine can be used to solve the problems related to the various fields. So at one instance, it may be uh, solving a complex scientific problem and the very next moment it may be playing a card game. So computers can of course do the multitasking unlike a human being. So again, it is a very versatile machine. And reliability. Okay, so a computer is a reliable machine, of course. So modern electronic components have long lives and computers are designed to make maintenance easy. So again, it's reliable. And of course, automation. 
Okay, so computer is an automatic machine. Automation is the ability to perform a given task automatically. Okay, so once the computer receives a program, the program is stored in the computer memory, then the program and the instructions can control the program execution without human interaction. So uh, computers can do that, okay? Next, of course, reduction in paperwork. No, so through computers, um, paperwork in cost will be um, reducted, okay? So uh, the use of computers for data processing and in an organization leads to reduction in paperwork and results in speeding up the process. So as data in electronic files can be retrieved as when required, the problem of the maintenance of large number of paper files gets reduced. So though the initial investment for um, installing a computer is high, it substantially reduces the cost of each transaction. So as um, just like today, okay? So of course there's no longer printout. So what we did was just, you know, share our different files through computer. So imagine there is no computer, okay? So of course, if there are different advantages of a computer, there are also disadvantages of computers. So the different disadvantages, first one is of course no IQ, okay? So a computer machine has no intelligence to perform any tasks, okay? Each instruction has to be given to the computer. A computer cannot take any decision on its own. So, uh, well, say IQ, no? So it will always depend on you, but it will always depend on the user, okay? Next is dependency, okay? As what I have told you, it functions as per the user's instruction. So thus it is fully dependent on humans. So if you don't give instructions to the computer, then the computer will not provide any output, okay? So that's the, that is the dependency, okay? Next is the environment. So the operating environment of the computer should be dust free and suitable, okay? But, uh, if, if your computer has too much dust, um, it will, you know, gonna damage the, the, the machine or the hardware. So it's very important that it will be in a dust free area and suitable. Next is no feeling. Okay, so computers have no feelings or emotions. It cannot make judgment based on the feeling, taste, experience, and knowledge, unlike you, unlike humans. Okay. Okay, so next is the different computer applications. So we have discussed this already in the chapter one. Let's just going to um, discuss it again. So uh, the different computer applications, of course, it is very important when it comes to education, okay? When it comes to banking, when it comes to health, when it comes to business, and when it comes to communication. So of course, and in education, as what we are doing right now, we are using computers for our online learning and in banking, um, yeah, we have a lot of, you know, automation happening right now. So, um, especially when paying your groceries or any transaction, no, gamit ang, um, gamit ang computer. Okay, so of course in health, um, as what I have mentioned in the chapter one, um, it will help the, the medical professionals to easily generate reports. And in business, um, there are a lot of people today who did online selling. No, they're gonna go pamaligya online, so this is very useful. And of course, in communication, so we can communicate even if we are far away from each other through the use of the, the computers. Okay, so those are the different computer applications. Next. Let's move on with the different computer generations. So uh, we're just gonna uh, look back. What are the different 
um, computers generations. So the first generation is from period of 1946 to 1959. So before it is a vacuum tube based. So as you can see in the picture, that is how it looks like. Okay, so that is the first generation of the computer. And next in the second generation, uh, it improves to transistor based from 1959 to 1965. So that is how the computer looks uh, like. Next, okay, and the third generation from 1965 to 1971, it becomes an integrated circuit based. So that is how it looks like. And then the fourth generation is the period from um, 1971 to 1980. So they use the VLSI microprocessor based. So there is now a microprocessor. Okay, and the last generation, the fifth generation from 1980 onwards, we now use the ULSI microprocessor based. So our computers today has now a ULSI microprocessor based. Okay, so those were the different computers generation. So we will not be discussing thoroughly all those histories. So we'll just get some glimpse, you know, some, some idea on when it started. Okay, so now we will be uh, moving forward with the different computer types. So again, as what I have mentioned in the chapter one, the different computer types are the personal computer, the workstation, the mini computer, mainframe, and the supercomputer. For the personal computer, again, it can be defined as small, relatively inexpensive computer designed for an individual user. So, um, Pieces are based on the microprocessor technology that enables manufacturers to put an entire CPU on one chip. And um, businesses use personal computers for word processing, accounting, desktop publishing, and for running spreadsheet and database management applications. So at home, the most popular use for personal computers is playing games and surfing the internet. And this can be used also for online learning, of course. Next is the workstation. So workstation is a computer used for engineering applications that could either be in CAD or COM, desktop publishing or software development and other such types of applications which require a moderate amount of computing power and relatively high quality graphics capabilities. So workstation generally come with a um, large high resolution graphic screen, large amount of RAM, inbuilt network support, and graphic user interface. So most workstations also have mass storage device such as a disk drive, but a special type of workstation called diskless workstation comes without a disk drive. Okay, so that is the workstation. Next is we also have the mini computer. A mini computer, it is a mid-sized multiprocessing system capable of supporting up to 250 users simultaneously, okay? And next is the mainframe. So the mainframe is a very large in size and is an expensive computer capable of supporting hundreds or even thousands of users simultaneously. Okay, so the mainframe executes many programs concurrently and support many simultaneous execution of programs. So that is how it looks like. Next is the supercomputer. Okay, so the supercomputers are one of the fastest computers currently available. So supercomputers are very expensive and are employed for specialized applications that require immense amount of mathematical calculations or number crunching. So for example, whether forecasting, scientific simulations, animated graphics, fluid dy dynamic calculations, nuclear energy research, electronic design, and analysis of geological data. Okay, in uh, example, in uh, petrochemical prospecting. Okay, so that is the use of a supercomputer. 
Okay, so those are the different computer types. Now we'll move forward with the different computer components. So if I'm too fast, feel free to just play back you know, on the different sites. Okay, so again, the process of a computer, of course, the number one is it will take input. Okay, so the process of entering data and instructions into the computer system. So what are the different input devices used when giving instructions to a computer? Next, after you give the instructions, you give the input, it will store the data. So in storing the data, of course, saving data and instructions so that they are available for processing as and when required, okay? So it will going to store the data in the CPU. The CPU also will process the data with, you know, the different units. So we will be discussing the CPU further in the next slide. And after it will going to process the data, it will going to give you the output. Okay. And again, the computer will going to control the workflow from taking an input, um, storing the data, and then giving it to the user or giving the output. Okay, so the input unit, so um, this unit contains devices with the help of which we enter instructions or data into the computer. Okay, so we will be discussing further what are different um, input devices. Next is the CPU or the central processing unit. This is considered to be as the brain of the computer. No, so the CPU performs all the types of data processing operations. It stores data, um, intermediate results, and instructions, and also it controls the operations of all the parts of the computer. And um, it has three components, namely we have arithmetic logic unit, we have the memory unit, and we have the control unit. Okay, and after that it will. Um, it will be going to the output unit. You know? So the output unit consists of the different devices with the help of which we get the information from the computer. So this unit is linked between, of course, the computer and the users. And output devices translates the computer's output into a form understandable by the user, okay? Okay. So again, the CPU is considered to be the brain of the computer. Okay, by, by the way, again, the central processing unit is just part of the unit, um, the system unit, okay? So now we will discuss the different um, units of the central processing. Okay, first is the memory or the storage unit. So this unit, will going to store the data, okay? And then um, this unit can store instructions or data and an intermediate result. So this unit supplies information to any other of the units of the computer when needed. So it is also known as the internal storage unit or the main memory, or it could also be the primary storage or the random access memory or the RAM, okay? And after that, it will go into the control unit. So the control unit, this unit will controls all the operations of all parts of the computer, but it does not carry out any actual data processing operations, okay? So the control unit in a CPU, it is responsible for controlling the transfer of data and instructions among other units of a computer. It manages and coordinates all the units of the computer it obtains the instructions from the memory, interprets them, and directs the operations of the computer. Uh, it, it communicates with input or output devices for transfer of data or results from storage. It does not process or store data, okay? So it will just control the data, okay? And next unit is the arithmetic logic unit. So the arithmetic logic unit consists of subsections, namely arithmetic and logic. So when we say arithmetic, it will perform the basic 
um, operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So all complex operations are done by making repetitive use of the above operations. Okay, and next is the logic uh, section. When we say logic section, um, it is by performing logic operations such as comparing, selecting, matching, and merging of data. So again, that is the use of the ar arithmetic logic unit. So we're gonna be discussing all the different devices in, uh, in the input units, in the memory unit, in the output unit, and etc. Okay, so um, in the next video, we will be discussing the different input devices and the different output devices. So as for this video, we have discussed the different um, components of a computer. So if I'm too fast, just feel free to replay this video and let's move on with the next video for the input and output devices. So thank you so much for watching and have a nice day and God bless to you. Uh -huh.